Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back for another Sunday morning of Faith in Our Hometown, our weekly conversation about things that matter to us in the greater Joplin area. And of course, as I'm kind of the eyes that I look through, the people, things that matter to us as people of faith, okay? We all have an interior life. We all have pieces of us that are known to us, pieces of us that aren't known to us. And I always find that fascinating, uh, that I'm always learning more about myself and I'm learning more about other people all the time. And especially as we interact with one another and we figure out what's going on. One of the things during uh, this new normal that we're, we're, we're attempting to struggle through and figure out uh, during this time of living in a time of pandemic is, you know, how are we coping and how are those things happening? A couple weeks ago, we had a, a, one psychologist on who talked a little bit about some of those things. And we've got another guest today, uh, Joshua Allison, who's an LPC at Renewed Mental Health. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, how we uh, kind of are coping during some of this time as well. So we're going to be right back to talk to Joshua right after this Mercy Minute. So grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and we'll be right back. ovarian stage 3C cancer in her early 40s. As a mother of two beautiful children, I didn't think twice about undergoing genetic testing here at Mercy. Even though I have grandparents and an uncle battle cancer, seeing a genetic counselor wasn't something that ever crossed my mind until my sister's results showed that she was BRCA2 positive. We've come a long way, especially in about the last five years. Genetic testing can pinpoint the cancers that you are at highest risk for in order to detect them earlier or if possible prevent them. My genetic counselor at Mercy, Robin, took note of my family health history and answered all of my questions. She even suggested my brother get tested. Robin said if he tested positive, he may be more likely to be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and that is what I lost my uncle to. There are uh, many other types of cancer that are also possibly hereditary, um, such as colorectal cancers, pancreatic cancers. I honestly was prepared to hear that I was positive, but indeed I was negative. And what a huge relief that was, not only to me, but to my family, to know I wasn't at a great risk of developing breast or ovarian cancer. Diet, lifestyle choices such as smoking or drinking all contribute to our risk for cancer. Genetic testing is taking just kind of one piece of that. Talk to your primary care doctor or your OBGYN and ask for a referral to a genetic counselor. Well, again, thanks again for joining us for another Sunday on Faith in Our Hometown. I'm still always amazed that some of you give up your Sunday mornings and some of you before dawn uh, to just view, to, to, to tune in and to listen to what our conversations, uh, which I feel always very blessed to have. Again, my guest this morning, Joshua Allison, who's an LPC, a licensed professional counselor, and Joshua's here from Renewed Mental Health. So Joshua, tell us a little bit about yourself, tell us a little bit about Renewed Mental Health, and then let's start talking about how we cope during some of this time. Right on, I'm a licensed professional counselor here in the area for 14 years, okay. right around there. Uh, right now working been here at- about the same amount of time. Oh, yeah. okay. Working at Renewed Mental Health, um, located in historical downtown Joplin. We like to help people there. Yeah. Mental health issues, behavioral issues, whatever private practice for the most part or connected with any kind of an organization or anything? Yep, private practice. Cool, all right. So we have the freedom to do what we need to do to help. Well, and what you're best at too, you yep. know? Sometimes you gotta be a general practitioner and sometimes you can specialize because it really is what you're good at too. Yeah. So um, talking with you earlier, um, I, I, you know, I know that people are, uh, some people have, you know, expressed you know, well, you know, I haven't been sleeping well during this whole time. You know, you know, I've had more time to rest, but I just haven't been sleeping well. It hasn't been coming well easily to me. So have we found out that there's a lot of disruption uh, in people's sleep patterns or things that are going on out there? Uh, is that part of what, what, what we're dealing with? Oh, very you? much so. Yeah. yeah. We're finding that sleep is something that changes, especially when we make changes. So year of 2020 has been full of a lot of changes changes into our habits and our routines and ultimately our sleep. Mm -hmm. So, and this goes either way from sleeping too much to not enough, let alone increased stress. All that has an impact and can change how we sleep, especially how we experience sleep. Mm -hmm. So we are finding, um, again, this is kind of our first time with the pandemic here in recent <laughs> history anyway. Right. So all this is pretty new, but we're first finding- First hundred years. Yeah, more and more research saying that we are experiencing, especially more vivid dreams now. 
Really? So the intensity is, is higher. And not just nightmares per se, but just the normal dreaming as well. Mm -hmm. But when we have more intense regular dreams, then when we do experience nightmares, those are unfortunately intensified too. Well, this is fascinating for me because I'll just share a little bit here. Sure. I mean, you know, I'm not going to turn this into a session, so you can't charge <laughs> me. But what I am going to say is, is that I, whenever I'm well rested, so I know that when I go on vacation, mm -hmm. okay, um, uh, that, that by the time I get to the end of vacation, I'm starting to remember my dreams. Yes. When I'm, when I'm regularly at home, a lot of times I don't remember my dreams. Now, I've always attributed that to the fact that I'm probably just not sleeping enough okay mm -hmm. and and that it's better for me when i'm better rested and when i'm on vacation and do all those things but i will say that one of the benefits of uh for me during the pandemic is is that i'm actually getting better rest and better sleep uh because i'm not running around from church to church to church because i've kind of been shut slow down. down a little bit yeah. yeah so i have been able to slow down a little bit and I've been remembering my dreams. I can't say that they've been more vivid, okay. but I can't say that they haven't either. Now that you raised that, it's gonna be interesting for me to kind of like <laughs> think about that over the course of the next, uh, the next few nights. Um, but I do know that I'm remembering them now uh, because I have been getting a little bit more. But I'm guessing that when people are talking to me or sometimes they're, they're, they're mentioning it, it's not because things are better, but it's usually because things are a little bit more trying. Right, when things are good, we usually don't hear about it. As soon as something goes wrong, that's when we hear about it, especially yeah. on my end of, of things. Right, so what have you been hearing lately? I mean, just tell me, what, tell me what's been going on out there and just in general, because some of our viewers may be experiencing some of the same things. Yeah, so, Again, being a therapist, I get to hear when people are struggling with things and having bad days. Right. And we know that with all the changes and all the struggles, we've, as a population, been under a lot more stress. Mm -hmm. So when things are stressed, those cracks are going to become more pronounced. So I'm starting to see more depression, more anxiety, um, past traumas that were either okay or okay enough are now starting to come to the surface. And a lot of that stuff plays out in our dreaming. Um, okay. Makes so I'm sense. seeing a lot more yeah. of those issues come down. You know, it's interesting to me. Um, I, um, you know, uh, you know, we were both here there, obviously during the tornado time. Yes. During the post-tornado time, it was very similar. Um, uh, anything that was just a little bit stressed before the tornado certainly didn't get better afterwards. Right. It just got a little bit more stressed. And the same thing is true this time around. Uh, I think that as <laughs> time goes on, we're figuring out that, you know, that anything that was a little bit stressed is now even more stressed because of the challenges that we're at. Yep. When things are going good, we usually don't ask for help. We usually don't take care of those things, those, those honey-do lists when it comes to ourselves and our mental health. <coughs> it's usually right. when something happens that everything that we didn't quite have nailed down or kind of put in a good spot, that's when it starts to spill out. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, what, what, I mean uh, without getting, of course, into anybody's specific therapy, sure, sure, of course. Um, what, what, what would, uh, if, if folks are out there experiencing uh, disruptions in sleep patterns or good things or bad things, what are some general health things that we should know, obviously, or what are ways okay. that you might be able to help people who are experiencing some of that disruption of, of what would be, quote, normal or healthy okay. in their life? And this is a really big topic. There's a lot of things out there because research is showing us that uh, sleep hygiene and what we do behaviorally with our sleep actually has a bigger impact to helping even sleep disorders than uh, medications do at this point. Wow. So we're really looking at- So reaching for the pill is not necessarily, you know, the sleeping pill is not necessarily the route to go. No, it may help stabilize some stuff, but at the end of the day, if we want to actually move on past an issue, we might have to change our behaviors with that. Well, no, that fits my prejudice with a lot of things. I mean, you know, of course I'm old, and mm -hmm. so, you know, we didn't always have pills for everything back right. when I was a kid, okay? Uh, and so, you know, uh, like, you know, for example, you know, back, I mean, I was, a, you know, my mother was an LPC as well, and, you know, she would always laugh and say, uh, when, when I, w I was in like my 40s, you know, or, you know, and I said to her, I said, Mom, do you really think that I might have been a little ADD? And she started laughing and she goes, <laughs> without a doubt, right? you know, without a doubt. But back in my day, we didn't have medicine. Nope. You know, we just had to learn how to, and, and unfortunately, I mean, I, you know, I, I just had to learn how to cope yep. without the medicine necessarily in order to do that. So how will we help folks cope with their, with their sleep stuff without medicines, without those kinds of things? How would we go about some of that? Well, one of the first ways I'll start with just looking at balanced sleep. Um, like even you mentioned, now that we're having a break, I'm getting more sleep. We know that the longer you sleep, the longer your REM cycles, that stage of where we actually really dream, the longer those are. So we're actually going to start to experience more dreams. So for those people that are experiencing uh, distress with their dreaming, okay. you know, maybe watching, not oversleeping, 
But again, the answer to that isn't, well, don't sleep at all, I won't dream, because if we are lacking sleep, then the body and the mind has to catch up. So now we have very, very intense REM cycles. Okay. So really the answer to this is surprisingly, finding a balance okay. between oversleeping and undersleeping. All right, so I mean, if I, you know, if I'm, if things aren't going well for me and I'm w watching this on TV, right. well, what, do I, what, what do I aim for? I mean, you know, is there, is there a certain time for everybody? Because it doesn't that change for everybody? It does. I wish there was a magic number because that would make yeah. life easier, but that's just not the world <laughs> I will look it up in. in the manual and I will yeah. tell you. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most of your research is going to say, oh, six, eight hours is probably pretty good depending upon what stage of life you're in. Uh, teenagers need to sleep a lot more. Uh, elderly, not as much. So Can me, I claim my, to be a teenager? No, just kidding. <laughs> my sleep cycle is about six hours. If okay. I sleep more than that, it's not necessarily very beneficial. Okay. So we all have a different point with that, and kind of finding where that sweet spot is is really the trick to that. So how would, how would one go about finding their sweet spot? How do, uh, what would you suggest? Well, if somebody came in and was kind of thinking they were all you know, out of sync. Right. And I'd probably look to maybe how the functioning was before. Because okay. my guess is throughout your lifespan, you kind of hopefully you've discovered where that sweet spot might have been. But now with all the changes in our routine, usually our sleep is the thing that suffers. So just kind of being mindful about where that spot is mm -hmm. and trying to get back to maybe how we were sleeping before. Yeah. Uh, I noticed with my kids, you know, because school's been closed. And so I, I'm ADHD, I have ADHD kids. Mm -hmm. And we found that we still have to get my boys up at 6.30 in the morning to start their day, to start doing things. Because then they can go to bed on time. Okay. And since we started making kind of those uh, boundaries with their sleep, their attitude, their behaviors, their, their energy and fun has all been just, uh, it's come alive, it's been really good. Yeah. So just kind of going back to what used to work and being mindful of that. Because yeah. most people don't wake up or, you know, most people don't go about their day trying to mess up their sleep patterns. Oh no, yeah, no, I don't think <laughs> anybody goes about intentionally no. trying to mess themselves up. No, but it happens. Yeah. And, and usually we have to do more or do less and sleep is the one thing that gets compromised a lot. So just kind of going back to a previous pattern behavior that was successful or that we realized was a good resting spot for us is probably one of the best advices to give them where to start anyway. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go back to my old parent. I'm, I'm liking <laughs> this, you know, eight hours every day. I, that, that, I mean, it's really been, it's been really helpful for me. Right. You know, every once in a while I have something in the morning where I, you know, I got to get up a little bit earlier and go mm -hmm. to it. But I, but I really like well, the Some people hours. are finding better. I mean, it's not always a distress. That's just what I hear. Yeah. Some people well, are yeah, finding more of that healthy pattern. And it's funny. I have not called you for an appointment to tell you my life no, is better. No, you, you should have don't. I? Very yeah. few people knock on my door Friday night and be like, I'm bored, let's have fun, let's do therapy. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't happen that way. I love it. Yeah. I, you know, it's the same thing. People usually don't call me when there's, you know, there's a problem. But I really will say I'm grateful once in a while for those folks who call me when, you know, when it's just like, I just want to call you to say hi, I'm having a great day. Blessings are always wonderful. Isn't it, isn't it great? <laughs> isn't it great? So what else have you been discovering about uh, people's things? I know we talked a little bit, in, you know, before we started recording tonight mm -hmm. about nightmares and stuff. So what's, what's going on with some of that? I was just like, I mean, you said there's some new stuff coming out. I'm like, well, let, let's talk about it. Yep. So again, kind of going back to previous conversations about just being under quarantine and just how we're dreaming more. Um, one of the leading ideas, because again, emerging research, is that actually if we are, uh, if we decrease our stimulus, meaning if we just stare at the four walls of our house all day long, we don't get out. I mean, of all the people that we ran into during our normal days, you know, in 2019, uh, there's a lot more activity involved compared to what a lot of us had experienced, you know, now in 2020. And they're saying that even just the lack of stimulus starts to, uh, your brain starts to then try to find things to do. And that usually oh. winds up manifesting in our sleep. Wow. So again, that's, that's one of the leading ideas of why we're having more vivid dreaming. Yeah, interesting. Well, um, my guest this morning, Joshua Allison, uh, who is with the Mental Health Network. Renewed Mental Re Health. Renewed Mental Health. I yep. knew there was a word I was you missing there. Renewed Mental Health. And uh, we're talking a little bit about uh, healthy sleep and those patterns during the pandemic. Um, we're going to be right back uh, after a real quick break, so don't go away. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.
Okay, again, welcome uh, back. Uh, we're glad you joined us this morning for Faith in Our Hometown. My guest, in case you haven't heard it, is Joshua Allison, who is from Renewed Mental Health, yep. uh, which is uh, a private counseling center downtown uh, in downtown Joplin. Uh, so if anybody's looking for a private counselor, there's a resource, okay? Um, but at any rate, before the break, Joshua, we were talking a little bit about, um, about sometimes when we don't have enough stimulus, our brains look for activity to get stimulated. Yes. And that's resulting for some people in, again, like you said, more vivid dreams, but also you said, for some people, nightmares? Oh, yes. For some Interesting. people, nightmares. Interesting. If you combine an uh, increase in intensity in dreams with an increased stress level, we're more prone to have nightmares now. Wow. Especially, again, if we were even dealing with mental health issues before, anxiety, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, nightmares are very common with those kinds of issues and concerns. So now we're kind of dialing up the intensity level on those. It's so interesting. I've not done any reading about dream work in, in years, okay? And so this is kind of fascinating for me because I just never stopped to think about it that way. That if, uh, you know, if my brain doesn't get enough stimulation other ways, um, that it could result in my brain doing entertaining, and I use that word in quotes, entertaining, right. things to me at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the brain is, uh, especially sleep, is all about brain activity. And even just, you know, um, electronic devices, again, sleep hygiene, how we prepare to put ourselves to sleep, really determines kind of that energy that we're, or that brain energy that we're activated at. So you've used that phrase twice now, okay. uh, you know, sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene. And, and so let's, let's unfold that a little bit for sure. everybody in terms of sleep hygiene. So what if, if you were going to tell me, like, you know, so I have a dental hygienist who right. tells me if I'm not flossing enough and doing all those things. So if, if you're my sleep hygienist, mm -hmm. what are you going to tell me to get me set up to, to, to maybe get the most out of my dreaming and what's happening to me in my unconscious? Right. So we're gonna start with food. When you eat food, your body is awake, your body is alive. Um, I know that uh, weight loss experts and health experts will tell you to eat breakfast, and eat breakfast in the morning, because that just wakens all of our organs and you actually burn more calories throughout the day because you've started the process earlier. Well, the same principle applies to when we eat, especially if we eat late at night. So late night snacking, uh, that kind of stuff, you wanna move meals a little lower in the day. So if you're eating, within an hour, hour and a half before bedtime, you're probably, your body's gonna have more fuel to burn off at that point. So our diet's a big part of that. Okay. Um, sleep routine is a big part of that. So if we look at kids and infants, usually we have a bedtime routine. I know for my kids, you know, we, we'd bathe them, we'd rub lotion on them, we'd read books, we'd seed songs, and you could tell, especially when they were little, like their eyes would slowly start to close as we went through sure. this routine because yeah. it's, it's program, it's behavioral. Yeah. Um, psychologically, neurologically, sometimes adults are big babies with their brains. Like the brains function the same way, whether we're an infant or an adult. So yeah. even just getting into, and usually I say about five steps, you want about five different routines over the course of 15 minutes before bedtime. Yeah. And that just helps to cue the body of all the natural um, uh, chemicals and things to help us shut off. Yeah. So we have diet, we have a uh, bedtime routine. Uh, water is a big part of this too. Um, again, especially when we're dealing with extra levels of stress or changes in our routine, your body processes more water quicker. So staying hydrated is actually very, very helpful in falling asleep and having the good brain wave uh, energy. See, at my age, you gotta be really careful about hydrating, you know, because- <laughs> There's a balance point again, right? There's a balance point. There's a balance I haven't all found it yet, because I love it when I can sleep through all the way into the morning, but sometimes I just don't quite make it because I hydrate a lot, you right. know? But, um, but yeah, but I, I, so I, I don't know what the, I don't want, I don't, I don't know what the <laughs> ramifications of, of not. Right. Uh, you know, I, fi I find that interesting, yeah. All these things you don't think of, you know, when you don't, you know, do this yep. for a living or, you know, like I say, a dental high just thinks about flossing and brushing and how to brush and way to, but when you, when you're a, when you're a sleep hygienist, if you will, right. Uh, you got to think about some of those things. So, uh, diet, um, sleep routine. Okay. To get you get set up. Okay. Uh, hydration. What, what else? Electronics. Okay. Um, and there are lots of ways with that. Um, especially being on the phones, electronic devices close to our face. Um, and a lot of our smartphones now will come with this blue lighting option you can kind of turn on to kind of help with that. 
And really the idea, especially if you're zoning out watching Netflix or watching TV, uh, part of your brain's just kind of on autopilot, just kind of sitting there. And there is subtle differences between being asleep and being kind of on that disassociate, dis disassociated autopilot kind of state. So half your brain is thinking it might be asleep while the other half is watching and viewing. And so it just makes it a lot harder for your whole brain then to turn off and fall asleep at that point. Yeah. So being able to take a break and get away, especially when we're having trouble sleeping. And this, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm victim to this as well. When I have trouble sleeping, I turn on the TV. <laughs> I do that and I usually I find myself staying up later and later and later doing that. It's not actually helpful for us. Yeah, it's interesting, I, uh, you know, um, I have always do the, the electronic thing earlier, right. okay? And then, but always before, you know, and then, then I pray, okay? And then after I pray, I'll read until I start to get sleepy. And then when I start to get sleepy a little bit, then I just kind of like reach up and turn off the light. Or in this day and age, also now that in the, in the age of electronic readers, okay? Yeah. I will just gently put that to the side and then just slowly just kind of, then I'm gone. And I think that's really helpful and really important because a lot of us will experience that point, that tipping point where we could fall asleep. But usually we're more governed by achieving this, finishing the chapter, doing whatever. And so we're more regulated by our objectives than trying to get good sleep. Yeah, and I'm not saying I don't mess it up from time to time <laughs> because sometimes if I'm reading a really good mystery or something like that, we all do I that. wanna read one more pet chapter, one more, one more chapter. Yeah. And the same thing I did as a kid. Yeah. And I'd push myself because I wanted to, oh, I'm like, I gotta finish this book. And for most people, it's not that big of a deal. But if we are struggling with those things, right. we need to be more mindful of those, of those things. And we do have that urge that I could probably go to sleep now. That's when we got to really just kind of go all in and let the natural process start to happen. Yeah. Now, if I could get some, if I could, you know, have a massage, you know, <laughs> where every night right before I went to bed, right. I, that would be like, wow, I would probably, you know, sleep like a baby all the time. For you some know? people, stretching. Yeah. You know, just kind of slowing the heart rate and the body down, uh, that works real well. However, for other people, that tends to wake up the body too. Mm. So you kind of have to know what works for you. Yeah. I wish, again, there was just, here's the manual, here's the here's five the things that you, you do, do and you turn off. Well, yeah. Not quite robotic like that yet. Yeah. Well, and I find it interesting because, I mean, I, I don't get a chance to get a massage very often. It's usually when I'm on vacation <laughs> or retreat or something like that. Right. And, you know, and then, you know, and there's, you know, somebody works for the center, the retreat center or the, you know, I, I'll, sometimes I'll take my retreat on a, on a, on, on a Alaskan cruise. So I'll go be the chaplain for the cruise. Oh, darn and yeah. then I just get to pray and read and eat and sleep and do my thing. And, you know, I usually yeah. get a massage while I'm there once, at least or once or twice. And I mean, I never stay awake for the home massage. Never. I don't think in my entire, you know, life have I ever stayed awake for an entire massage because I just finally get in that relaxed that I'm just kind of like, and then I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of nice. So interesting. Anything else we're missing on a list if we're doing good sleep hygiene? <laughs> Those are pretty much the, the, the big ones. Okay. Um, the only thing I would add, again, like exercise or like stretching, you know, stretching or yoga or something, you know, slow, lower the heart rate. That works for some people. It doesn't for others. The same thing for uh, showers. Right. Sometimes uh, your skin is one of your largest organs in your body. And um, so when you especially get like hot showers, that overstimulates the body, okay. which then allows it to turn off. This is very helpful for kids often. Again, remember going back to, to when my kids were babies, if they were having problems sleeping, I'd, we'd throw them in the bathtub and then they would fall asleep pretty quickly after that. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of just temperature changes that happens from hot water to getting out of the shower, getting out of the bath, then getting back into a cozy bed just kind of increases that gravity to gravity. sleep. Sure, yeah, I think about that. It was interesting, I went, uh, my, when I was first out on an internship and lived with the priest on the other side of the state in Bealey, Missouri, and we always would have this conversation because the last thing he did before he went to bed every night was he'd take his shower at night. Yeah. And I could never do that because if, if I took a shower late at night, I'm always up for, you know, mm -hmm. uh, at least an hour, hour and a half after I take right. that shower. Because for whatever reason, it has the opposite effect. I mean, it wakes me up. For him, it would put him to sleep mm -hmm. like a baby, as you said. Sleep is very behaviorally reinforced. So again, if we're just trying to make some of these changes, um, I'd probably caution people to do it maybe towards the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you need, and I guess you've got to experiment with some of it, I'm you guessing. Do. You know, to find out what actually works for you. Yeah. We're because all what works for different. you might not work for me and vice versa. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. 
So what else? What, what, I, I love this whole business about the day of sleep and dreams and, you know, not the nightmare part. I would like to avoid <laughs> those, and that's all good. Anything else that you've been reading lately, you know, since you're kind of a, you know, my, you're the first sleep, quote, expert I've talked to. Well, I don't and know I know, that funny, and I know but... I'm using the word in quotes so that you don't get in any trouble or Thank anything. You. But yes. <laughs> but I'm just saying, so anything else you might just, any, anything, a little data that you might be carrying around there that might be helpful? How for us? we go to sleep is very important. And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the state of mind and the stories that we tell. So whether we're looking for positive dreams or we're trying to minimize the negative ones, how we go to sleep is very important. So uh, I remember being young and having nightmares. And I'll even tell this with my kids when they're having nightmares. Grab your stuffed animal and tell it a, a, tell it a bedtime story. Hmm. And because they're in a more positive, happier frame of mind, you actually tend to dream in that direction. Interesting. So kind of like where you tend to lead your brain, so to speak, as you fall asleep will be the course it usually takes. Yeah. And now that's not a perfect science, but we're, no, finding, but we're finding in the research, though, that there is some good evidence to being prayerful right before bed. I mean, I'd imagine that the best place to fall asleep might be the throne room. Yeah, there you, you know, go. Telling positive stories. Uh, those kinds of things can be very helpful. Wonderful. Well, my guest uh, this morning, Joshua Allison uh, from Renewed Mental Health yep. uh, downtown. So Joshua, thanks for being with us. We're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. Don't go away. A new baby changes the world and each of us. The Sisters of Mercy devoted themselves to offering exceptional maternity and delivery care, training generations of nurses to do the same. Mercy continues to answer the same call, to not only care for your baby, but to cherish them too. Mercy, in every era, your life is our life's work. Learn why we serve at mercy.net slash legacy. In Ireland, the first Sisters of Mercy were called the Walking Sisters because every day they went out in search of women and children who needed healing or help. Mercy continues to answer the same call, dedicated to the health of every woman who comes to us for care. Mercy, in every era, your life is our life's work. Learn why we serve at mercy.net slash legacy. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with Joshua Allison this morning. Um, I, I haven't thought about the world of dreams and all those things in a long, long time. And so it was a, a fun conversation for me. Dreams are important in just about every tradition of belief. Um, there was a time when we used to believe that dreams were not just, you know, kind of, you know, whatever had happened in our subconscious, but that the subconscious also taught us some things. And I think Joshua's advice today was, let's tend to that a little bit better and we might be better tending to the inner work and the inner soul that all of us need to do. He didn't use those words, those are my words, but I, I really, I've enjoyed the conversation. It's given me a few things to think about in terms of those things. And I loved the idea of, you know, telling that positive story to your stuffed animal. Uh, I, that's, I like it. Life is good. So again, thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning of Faith in Our Hometown. I do hope that your sleep is grand. I hope that your dreams are filled with uh, things that are going to lead you to wholeness and health. Uh, let's continue to care for each other. This is Faith in Our Hometown. Please join us next week. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.